Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Uh, I'm currently sitting in the Nissan Leaf and I'm just to start things off, I'm going to just do the old 0 to 60 test. It's completely unnecessary, but I'm going to do it anyway, so here we go. Um, so, but this week's episode of Fully Charged is a little bit different because I've had a bit of a nerd fest. I went to see an amazing company uh, that have only been set up a couple of years just outside Oxford. They're called Yassa Motors and they made the electric motors that power the Delta E4 Coupe, which I drove recently, which I think I'm going to be driving again quite soon on a special uh, trip from Oxford to London. Uh, now, Yassa Motors, uh, an amazing company that's a spin out from Oxford University. The uh, two people that set it up both um, have done postgraduate degrees at Oxford University in engineering and they have designed and built a, an ultra lightweight, ultra powerful electric motor um, that is just an amazing kind of breakthrough and it just shows, I really wanted to use them as an example of the kind of technological breakthroughs that are happening and I, and I have to beg your forgiveness because it was all done in a bit of a rush. Uh, obviously they're very busy people so I kind of had to snatch as much time as I could from them and the camera work possibly isn't up to the normal very high quality standards that you have come to expect on fully charged. Uh, it's a little bit ropey but I've done the best I can with it and uh, I think still the the uh, the content is, is relevant and interesting. So this is my report from Yasa Motors. Uh, Tim, can you uh, sort of describe to me what we're seeing here? This is uh, for us to test and sign off our electric motors before right. shipping them to a customer. So we effectively have one motor on one side working as a, a motor and the other working as a generator. So they, they torque up against each other. So one is the load and one is the, the source. So that one is spinning with power going into it to turn it. Exactly. And this one is effectively a generator? Yeah, so we, um, we, we circulate the power on the rig, so what, the power goes into one motor and out the other motor and then the power supply behind you is, is just a small power supply to feed in just the losses on the rig. Right. So that means it's a nice simple uh, cost-effective setup for testing 200 kilowatts of motors. Right, so there yeah. can be a, a motor that pushes you along, exactly. but there can also be a, a generator that generates electricity. Yeah. It's the same thing, it's not it's two same. separate machines. It's basically. the same thing. This is, uh, this is what we do as a company, is we mm. make ultra-compact, lightweight traction motors. So um, that motor there is it's about um, seven litres in volume and yet it's 100 kilowatts so 120 brake horsepower so right. that's that's more than most people have in their in their in car their, in their car so yeah. that is extraordinary and then the, the other one i'd love you to explain is the newton meters because uh, okay. what, what are these produced they yeah so uh, so these are 750 newton meters typically a, 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 an adult can twist to, uh, to about 10 newton meters right so, so if you're holding on to a sort of a, a, a bar a bar and, and you try and twist it as hard as you can so it's about 10 newton meters right. so it's, it's a bit like having 75 adults in a line all twisting as hard as they can right. and that's one motor's worth of wow. twist bit, or torque basically. Yes. Uh, typically uh, so the, the engine I've got in my car produces about I think it's 120 newton meters of, of torque so right. one of these motors actually produces a lot more torque than a typical petrol engine right. but then a petrol engine uses gearboxes yeah. and differentials to, to get the speed down and the torque up. These are specifically designed to run at lower speed and higher torque, right. so you don't need some of that transmission. Because that was the, the beauty of the design of the Delta, because it was always my in my mind, oh, electric motors are much simpler, they don't need gearboxes. Yeah. These are literally an axle coming out yeah. of the side of this motor to the wheel. There is nothing in between that. A the two. Absolutely, so it, it, it makes the packaging and the installation very simple. Um, it makes the efficiency better because we haven't got any losses through, yeah. the, through the transmission. If we compare it to a more similar higher speed motor like the Prius motor, we're um, about f uh, six or seven times lighter for the same amount of power. That's, right. um, and oh, so it's more the weight then? So the, the, the yeah. electric motor in the Prius is quite heavy? Yeah, and volu volumetrically, I, I think we come out almost ten times better. So it's uh, our motors are a lot smaller, right. lighter than than right. motors. I know the question that I get asked a lot is about is about the materials that go into making yeah. the electric motors. Well, oil's running out, but if we then replace it with some other, we yeah. use some other material that is finite, and we're going to run out of it. 
everything in the motors is recyclable so the, right. the permanent magnets yes they are called rare earth permanent magnets but there are even in current consumption hundreds of years worth of uh, rare earth permanent magnets in the world so it's not actually as rare as, as people think right. um, and they're recyclable so um, you know once people finish using the motors we can get them back and, and recycle the so you can you can take those magnets out and yeah, reuse them they don't lose their, exactly. their magnets sort of turn them back into a powder form and then and then reuse them as a, a different type of magnet right. so they're completely recyclable all the copper in the motors recyclable all, all the components right. are recyclable so it, it means that that you know that fear of running out of stuff isn't the same with oil which isn't yes. recyclable once no. it's used it's gone so it's uh, now, one of the real frustrations that I had on the day was um, partly that I was rubbish at doing it because we got, I got I, Tim was such an amazing guy and we talked for hours and we, I didn't record any of it and he told me some amazing stuff and, oh, you know, but one of the problems was they didn't want me to shoot some of the um, construction processes of the motors because it's a, you know, it's copyrighted stuff, it's a proprietary brand, they're developing these engines, they're really using a lot of cutting edge technology. But um, one of the things I understood, they use um, rare earth magnets, electric motors and magnets. I mean, I kind of knew that before, but, ah, oh, that's so weird. The, I find magnetic forces quite disturbing. If I try and push these two magnets together, these are tiny little magnets, but they're very strong. <laughs> you can see uh, how hard that is. No, I cannot, I actually cannot make them actually touch each other. And all they're doing is pushing off to one side or the other. You can see that motion is very natural. Mm -mm -mm. And that is what is happening inside an electric motor. And you, when you feel that force here with these tiny magnets, I mean, these are pathetic. You know, the big, chunky rare earth magnets, they're sort of that big that they've got in those. And there's loads of them in a circle around there. And then inside there's the copper coil wrapped around a piece of ferrous, irony stuff. It's all wrapped around in a clever, special way. I don't know. You know, I mean, they could, people could torture me and I wouldn't be able to give away any of their secrets. But anyway, so there's magnety, magnety things pushing against electromagnets in a, a way that the and the electric the way the electric current goes into the the uh, copper coil around there it goes one way then the other one way then the other very very fast and that drives the two ow <laughs> sides of the magnets that drives the the wheel round and that gives you this enormous amount of power and torque from zero to very high speed and it also generates a lot of electricity so the regenerative braking is equally more powerful and more efficient so you're generating more power as you're slowing down really really clever amazing blokes uh, really impressive uh, bit of technology and a lot of interest from lots of people that you've heard of that make cars so good luck to them fantastic anyway that's all see you soon